back to the City of Roses and uh, thanks uh, for being with us on Morning Live and we've been at it since yesterday celebrating Women in Science and Research and the 20th anniversary of the South African Women in Science Awards last night and what a beautiful occasion it was and a room filled with winners here this morning and of course their support uh, because we heard from our keynote speaker who gave, you know, a very incisive but also thought-provoking speech last night about uh, some of the challenges but also the achievements of women in science and we're going to take those conversations further you'll get to hear from uh, some of the winners from last night and some of the wonderful work and I think South Africa we're doing ourselves a disservice by not focusing on all the innovation, all the research, and the beautiful work being done by these women. I tell you, if you read uh, their uh, bios and, and, and if you just uh, look at a snippet of the work that they're doing, your mind will be blown. And it's important, I think, that we showcase what is happening in terms of science and innovation research in our country. And uh, let's perhaps use this as a stepping stone towards that. I'm joined now by the Deputy Minister of the Department of Science Technology and Innovation, and uh, uh, thank you so much, DM, for coming through, uh, DM Kina. And then we also have uh, one of the winners last night, uh, Professor Zlungile Mkize Kwichana, and next to her, of course, is Michelle uh, Hololo from L'Oreal. Now, thank you so much, ladies, for joining me. Minister, it's very important to support women in science for some of the obvious reasons, but some of the not so obvious reasons as well in terms of what women are up against in the academic space. Yeah, good morning Sakina and good morning to the viewers. You are correct, it's quite important that we support these women. There's so much work that they do. But firstly for me, why we need to support, firstly let me congratulate the winners Sakina, it was quite an exciting yeah. evening, even this morning you can see yeah, the excitement is still in, the, <laughs> still in the air, thank you very much, uh, and we are here to thank them Sakina, when we talked, uh, this is the science sector, most women, it's not the sector where we used to find women getting attracted to, to, be, to be part of the sector, but really what you are seeing, the traction that you are seeing, the numbers, the percentages that we are seeing of women getting into the science sector, it's quite amazing and heartwarming. And as you are saying, we need to give them support in all the way that we can do. And as a government, we are trying our level best to make sure that we work with them, we support them, we make the environment conducive for them to come and play their part in science, in the science sector. We, we, we really appreciate them. So for us even to come with platforms like this, the SAWISAs, the funding, uh, uh, patterns that you are having, there's so many financial uh, institutions that you are having, NRF within the department, what we can do to assist them. Really, we are trying to make sure that we attract as much as we can. But above it all, Sakina, as the Department of Science, Technology, Innovation, what we, 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 we are mandated to do and what we want to do even most is to work mostly even with the Department of Basic Education to say, how do we build this pipeline starting from the early ages? Because mm. we cannot only focus at the masters and the doctoral level without making sure that we build that solid foundations, sound foundation coming from that level. And what we always say, we cannot win when we say, as the department, we can do that alone. Mm -hmm. These winners that are here, in the institutions that they are leading, in whatever company or where they are, they will be there, our ambassadors, will be working with them where they will go down and mentor those young ones, open up doors for them. We we'll fully rely on them, the partnership that we are going to be having with these beautiful successful and progressive ladies that are here that have won and looking back 
uh, 20 years ago, all the Sawisa women, what have they done when it comes to the science sector? We fully rely and we are working with them. And I can assure you, Sakina, we might not have reached where we want to reach when it comes to opening doors, when it comes to STEM subjects and issues of science, but we have made a, a very good progress and mm. watch the space, we'll reach there. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, with regard to the women in the room, and I think for me, from a broadcasting perspective, one of the most important things is actually showcasing and bringing that sort of visibility to the women in this room, uh, as I was saying last night, because you want young girls and young women to see themselves in this room, to see that it is possible, yeah. you know, and, and, and to actually go out there. You speak of their mentoring. We hope they have the time, but I know they always <laughs> say, if you want something done, give it to someone who's busy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, am, I have no doubt that they are willing to give back and that they would want to. But it's so important that we actually beam these pictures to show people, people who look like them, who mm -hmm. are able to get into these sort of career paths. Because one of the other things we take for granted is that there is exposure when it comes to careers that uh, children and young people can take up. It's not true. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, I was listening to all of you last night and what you've achieved. And, and I think South Africa will be as, you know, surprised, pleasantly so, as I was last night. But I, I, I want to um, move on, um, uh, DM, and I'll come back to you, uh, to Professor Zilungilem Kize Gwichana. And I deliberately didn't say anything further than your name, because I want you to tell South Africa who you are and what you did to receive that award last night. Um, thank you, Sakina, and uh, good morning to the viewers. Uh, good morning to the DM. Firstly, may I steal a minute to say thank you to the DM and to the Department of Science and on behalf of all the winners. We never got a chance to mm -hmm. say thank you. This is such a feat. It's, we are just highly appreciative. I am uh, Professor Zilungile Mkize Kwichana. I'm a distinguished professor at the University of South Africa. I'm also an honorary associate professor at the University of KwaZulu Natal and also a research associate at the University of Johannesburg. Um, my research um, is on uh, neglected tropical diseases. These include your rabies, your leprosy and most commonly the worm infections, I will call them that. Most of these are neglected and uh, since the, at the advent of HIV AIDS, it was discovered that countries that have very high uh, levels of these infections, particularly the worm infections, were actually displaying a very aggressive form of the disease. There were many theories like probably those were getting a different strain of the HIV and so forth. All of that was disproved. And then it came out that probably these infections actually because of their nature, they are chronic. It means they stay con for up to 25 years in the body if there is no treatment. What they do then, they dampen or they slow down the, the ability of the immune system to respond to other high pathogen, pathogenic uh, infections like HIV, TB and all. So my work was the first to report, in fact, evidence that indeed those with worm infection, mind you, these are adults, had higher viral loads and lower CD4 counts, actually showing strong suggestive evidence that these infections actually cause harm to the immune system and then the other infections are not well taken care of. We then went on and on. We had a number of other studies. The first study was done in Cape Town, Kailisha. The second one I led in north of Devon. Then the last one was done in south of Devon, showing similar results. And we've gone on to show that it's not only these pathogens, it also disables the immune system to curb cancer development. We know that our immune system is constantly looking for cancerous cells. So if it's, hem it's hampered by these chronic infections, then the, the cancer can develop further. So that's where, in short, where we are with a marvelous group of 
students that are mentoring mostly women. Oh. So uh, this is why I wanted her to introduce herself, yeah. essentially, yeah. <laughs> because nobody can do it better yeah. than her to speak about her work. And uh, by the way, this is uh, the winner in the Distinguished Women Researcher Public Engagement with Research category from last night. Mm. And then moving to uh, Michelle Hololo from uh, L'Oreal. And Michelle, you have a long-standing relationship with the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation in supporting these awards and uh, generally the work that the department does. Uh, why does L'Oreal see the need to do that? Thank you so much, Sakina, and good morning to everybody. Um, I always love to um, start with the sentence that um, when people think about L'Oreal, they think about a beauty brand. But we consider ourselves to be a science-based company because everything that we do I, um, Science is in our DNA. So our founder was a scientist, and that's why as L'Oreal, we saw it very fit for us to support women in STEM. And I think speaker after speaker yesterday, they've already spoken about um, the underrepresentation of women in science. And that's why as L'Oreal, we thought, what is it that we can do to also um, drive the inclusivity, to empower women, to make sure that they have equal footing in, this, in, in, the, in the science field? And um, we always like to say we lead by example as well. We have our own RNI center um, at our head office in Johannesburg, where most of the people working there are women. Women that are behind groundbreaking innovations, the beauty innovations that we see um, on, your, on your beauty um, stores. Mm. And, you know, if we look at uh, the beauty business, that industry, um, I was reading somewhere that uh, for the projection for 2025 mm. is that this is a 650 billion US dollar business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of money being spent by a lot of women on all sorts of products. And, and yeah. innovation is key because we find women are looking out now for more natural uh, sort of products. And uh, I suppose the women and others around here are the people who will be helping you innovate. Exactly, and, and that's why as L'Oreal we find it so important to invest in our innovation center because that's where the heart of our development is. And more importantly, it's very, very key now, you mentioned, to produce products that are inclusive, to produce products that are able to cater for all the different skin tones, um, all the different um, you know, um, hair types um, that we're looking at. So science is behind each and every little thing that we do. And I always say, when we go into um, the lab and you're like, oh my hair, I've got like dandruff. There's science behind that. Why do you have a dandruff? And there's this big machine when you get into um, the lab and they're like, oh, you can see layers. I was so intrigued. You can see so many different layers. And then from there, they come up with products to say, how can we actually respond to the need? So literally, as I said, science is instilled in everything that that we do and I always say when you put on that lipstick ladies know that there was science behind that lip color <laughs> <laughs> and then and there are so many fascinating you know advances uh, for example all the ladies you know they put up their hands and the beautiful nails and what that's you know, not something I do but, but, but <laughs> I, I, I've seen lately that you know now they have breathable nail polish uh, which you know for obvious reasons mm -hmm. would be healthier uh, mm -hmm. for our nails, but it, it's just amazing all the scientific developments uh, that are afoot. But then coming back, uh, Deputy Minister, with regard to just showcasing the wonderful work that is being done in the room, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I wish I could just run through mm -hmm. and, and give everyone an opportunity to just briefly tell us in like those minute clips they had last night, what it is that they do, uh, the groundbreaking work that they are doing. So we know that funding is a problem, but how is the department looking at supporting all of these initiatives going forward? So you know, before I come to the funding part of it. I'm so excited. What's after listening to Lungi and oh, Michelle. Oh, Michelle? You know, we have got a mantra in the department where we are saying we are putting science at the center mm -hmm. of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Center of education, society, business, industry, and so forth. And what she has just said, Really, it says 
whatever we do is science. Mm -hmm. As we're sitting here, it's science. So that's exactly what you are saying as the department. Let the society, let the public know that science is everywhere. It's at the center of everything that we do. Thank you very much for those wonderful words. But coming to your question, Sakina. Yes, we might be having difficulties when it comes to funding, but what we want to say is seated here as the department, good people, let's network. Mm. There are options and opportunities that we have as a department where we try by all means to fund, to assist those who want to do studies in science, as I've said, NRF and so forth, we have got the PhD, the presidential PhD programs. Uh, there, are, as, there are avenues where we can assist. It might not be enough, but for me, what is more important is that don't sit in your corner and say you don't have funds. Mm -hmm. I think as the country, South Africa, we've moved really from that. We, we, we can't afford to have a learner seated at home saying, I'm not going to school because I don't have funds. Mm -hmm. I lack funds. Really, I, I think you'll attest and you'll agree with me when it comes to that. Yes, there might be difficulties, but let's take an example of a Professor No, no Crazy as the one who was our program, uh, our guest speaker yesterday. For me, it was so much heartwarming to hear Professor Mziligazi yesterday saying, I am a Dinswalo of this country. I'm where I am because of the funding that I've got. It, it, it might not have come easier as to say he was, she was just sitting and somebody knocked and said, this, these are the funds, these are the funding opportunities that we have. Mm. But there are so many, as I'm saying, can we don't the rest, can we talk, can we network, the department, we, we are open, we might not assist you and get to that level for now, but with the pieces and packages that are there and the networking, mm -hmm. as we are having such platforms, it's because we want to create such platforms where we can network and say, how best can we help? And more especially when it comes to female uh, to the females really we won't rest up until we help you you get those funding but as we are saying we have quite a lot uh, for me we, we talk of the presidential phd uh, programs we talk of the nrfs but what i am saying where do we even start with them from getting to, you know, when you get into the tertiary level and as fast as there, we might not get that much, but coming from then up to the senior uh, degrees, uh, really, we do have a, a lot of, of, of assistance that we give to our learners who want to do anything, to our students, not learners. Themselves. Well, thank you so much, uh, Deputy Minister uh, Gina. But as we go to this ad break, I want to hand it to uh, Professor um, Kize Kwechana. To the young girl who's about to go to school, the young lady about to leave to wherever she's going, why is it possible for her to be you? It's so more possible now than it was for us back then. So I want to tell each and every one that and the word impossible should never exist because there are so many opportunities and technology is in their hands from a very young age. So if they start switching and thinking this is technology, this is science, if they can play games on their, on their laptops, on their cell phones, that should stimulate. And they even now have artificial intelligence, which means their natural intelligence has much more capacity to then leverage on the artificial intelligence. So to each and every girl, it is so possible, the word impossible should never exist in their lives. Well, thank they you so much to our panel. <laughs>